Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome back. Hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day. This is not a pro or anti electric vehicle video, and I'm certainly not promoting any political point of view or ideology. This is meant to be a common sense discussion where I explain how we're doing pretty much everything wrong in our endeavor to make vehicles more efficient and burn less hydrocarbon and why you shouldn't believe anything politicians or corporations say. Politicians just want your vote and corporations just want your money. I just want you to listen to my video and give me a like if you enjoy it. So about 400 years ago, we learned everything we needed to know uh, in order to make cars more efficient right now. Uh, 400 years ago, there was this guy named Isaac who was sitting under an apple tree and he noticed the apple falling from the tree. And he thought to himself, why did that apple, when it disconnected from the tree, fall down and hit the earth? Why didn't it float up into the sky? He started thinking about the different ways the apple could move. If he picked it up and he threw it, he knew that it would travel through the air and then eventually hit the ground. But if he threw it harder, it would travel through the air further and then hit the ground. And then he thought, well, what if I throw this apple so hard in that direction that it just keeps going in that direction and never falls down and goes all the way around the earth and hits me in the back of the head? And then he thought, is that similar to what the moon is doing? The moon is traveling so fast around the earth that it just keeps going around. And his brain was puzzled and he thought and thought and thought. And eventually he came up with Newtonian physics. He derived a series of formulas, some simple relationships that describes how objects move and how they interact with each other. And from his simple formulas, we were able to figure out in a time before we even had computers. The computer in my Subaru is more powerful than any computer we had when we landed on the moon. Uh, we were able to figure out how much force was required to lift a mass of a rocket and launch it in a direction so that it would intercept the moon. His most simple equation, and everybody knows it, is F equals MA. And that's pretty much all we have to know in order to make cars more efficient today. Now, a lot of you have heard that equation, but maybe some of you are not uh, studied in physics or mathematics, and you may hear the equation, but not necessarily know what it means. What does that actually mean, F equals MA? It's a relationship between three things force, mass, and acceleration. Don't think of it as F equals MA. Think of it this way. How much force is required to make a certain mass accelerate at a certain rate? It's a relationship. The higher the mass, the more force is necessary. The lower the acceleration, the less force is necessary. It's a relationship between three things. Now we have to take a little bit of an aside here because F equals MA is pretty much everything we need to know until we get onto the highway. When we start cruising on the highway, the most important thing is wind resistance. And the faster we go on highways, the less fuel efficient our cars are, simply because uh, when you get to higher and higher speeds, wind resistance becomes the most dominant thing that your car has to push its way through. That's why in the 1970s, when OPEC uh, cut oil off to the world, the United States lowered the speed limit to save fuel. They lowered the speed limit to 55 miles an hour all over their highways because dropping from 65 to 55 saved a ton of fuel for the whole country. Now, wind resistance doesn't really matter when you're going from, say, zero to 60 kilometers an hour. In fact, the difference in amount of fuel you would use if you're cruising, say, at 40 kilometers an hour as opposed to 70 kilometers an hour is almost negligible. But the difference in the amount of fuel you use if you're cruising at say 100 kilometers as opposed to 120 is huge, just because wind resistance will increase exponentially uh, as you cruise faster and faster and faster on the highway. And the amount of energy to keep your car moving at a certain velocity is gonna require more fuel, exponentially more the higher you set that cruise control. And we all just wanna go faster, right? Faster, we wanna get there faster. We don't want to cruise at 90. We want to cruise at 140. You know how much more fuel you use at 140 compared to 90? A lot. It's exponentially more. So an easy way to save fuel and make the whole fleet of uh, cars in North America 25% more fuel efficient on the highways is simply to lower the speed. But it's so easy for us to just do this with our foot and we can cruise at 150 kilometers an hour. You know, As long as there's no cops around, why cruise at 90? Well, you can't fight physics and you're going to use a lot more fuel. Now forget about the highway. Let's talk about where fuel efficiency has nothing to do with wind resistance. Okay, uh, let's talk about city driving or the majority of driving uh, that we do. And Newton's equation F equals MA is all we need to figure out how to make uh, cars more efficient. Now in that equation, what's the simplest term to understand? Mass. Everyone knows what mass is. And it's a simple relationship. What that equation is telling us is that 
the higher the mass, the more force is required to accelerate that mass at a certain rate of change of velocity. The less the mass, the less force is necessary to accelerate that mass at the same rate of change. Does that make sense to you? Now think of the force as being proportional to the amount of energy, the amount of power, the amount of push that the engine has to apply to that mass, which is proportional to fuel. The more power, the more force your engine could put out, the more fuel it's using, pretty much. And the auto industry is constantly trying to create the force as efficiently as possible. They're trying to make engines more efficient to use less fuel to generate the same amount of horsepower and, and force to push that mass around on the roads. But simple physics, Newton figured it out 400 years ago, it requires more force to accelerate a higher mass. So it's simple. If we want to make uh, uh, cars more efficient, we just have to decrease the amount of mass. We have to make cars lighter. And that's exactly the opposite of what we're doing. In North America, everyone wants to drive a big truck and a big SUV. The bigger, the better. Cars weigh more and they need bigger engines so they can apply more force to accelerate those cars. If you legislated that all cars have to be 25% less massive or weigh 25% less, that simple equation tells us that you need 25% less force. It's one to one. If you drop the mass of a vehicle by 25%, you need 25% less force to accelerate the vehicle in the same way. That's why you shouldn't be driving around with a whole bunch of stuff in the back of your car. You're getting less fuel efficient. Now think about electric vehicles. The government in my country has just legislated, made it law that all vehicles sold after 20 35 must be EVs. Electric vehicles are heavier than equivalent gas-powered vehicles. Why? Because a gas-powered vehicle can move around uh, carrying just a small amount of hydrocarbon fuel, whereas an electric vehicle has to charge a large battery and take the battery around with it. So if I was a supreme being and I just could snap my fingers and transform all the cars in North America from being gas combustion engines to electric, just by snapping my fingers, the whole fleet has changed. The cumulative mass of all vehicles in North America would jump up by about 20, 25%. And we would require 25% more force to accelerate those vehicles that are now more massive. So once we convert the whole fleet, any way you look at it, we will need more force more fuel. You can't fight physics. We will require more energy to move the same fleet of vehicles if they have more mass. Now the goal is that we produce that energy in an efficient way so that we can charge those vehicles that will require more energy. All right. Overall, think about that. I, I'm sure some of you are confused. No, no, no. They're more efficient. A more massive vehicle will require more F, more force, more energy, to accelerate at the same rate. Now, if you look at some of the first electric vehicles that are being offered, it seems that the car companies have a completely different motivation for offering them than to make cars more efficient. One of Ford's first electric vehicles and the one that's most advertised is an electric F-150. It's one of their most massive vehicles. It's called the Ford Lightning. Do you know how much more a Ford Lightning weighs than a regular F-150. One of GM's first electric vehicle offerings is a Hummer, an electric Hummer. Now you can check these numbers, but I believe just the battery portion of an electric Hummer is almost 3,000 pounds. An electric Hummer, I believe, weighs well over 10,000 pounds. I'll check that number and put it on the screen here. They're offering the most massive vehicles that they have available. <laughs> They're fighting physics the whole way. So, okay, M. We've looked at one term, M. And it's a simple, Newton would have told us, oh, simply reduce M and you'll need less F. Okay, what about the next term? A. Force equals mass times acceleration. What does A mean? It's actually more significant than the mass because it's very difficult to decrease the mass of a vehicle past a certain point. But decreasing the acceleration is not difficult at all. In fact, some cars already do this. A friend of mine owns a little automatic Volkswagen with over 300 horsepower and one of the features in that car is you can adjust in the settings how you want that car to behave. There's an eco mode 
and then two or three settings and then sports mode. And it's a simple little computer adjustment to the throttle response so that if he sets it in eco mode and he presses on the gas, that car will accelerate as slowly as possible. The rate of change of velocity will be small. So if he wants to go from zero to 100 in eco mode, it may take him 20 seconds. If he sets that at sports mode and he presses on the gas, that car accelerates as quickly as possible. The rate of change of velocity is as fast as it can be. And that car can go zero to 100 in say five seconds. In eco mode, it's taken him four times longer to reach the same speed. He's accelerating slower by a factor of four, which means he requires four times less force to move that car, proportional to four times less fuel. And you can see it on his gauge when he's in sports mode and he's accelerating. He can see it. He's using 59 liters per hundred uh, kilometers, 58 liters per hundred kilometers. In the US, you guys use miles per gallon. A little readout there will say you're getting two miles per gallon, three miles per gallon as you're accelerating furiously. But if you put it in eco mode and you're accelerating very, very slowly, that same reading might say 28 miles per gallon, 29 miles per gallon. It's a huge difference. In fact, limiting acceleration is by far the biggest factor, the biggest thing we can do to make cars more efficient. And that's exactly the opposite of what consumers want and what car companies advertise. Even as we transition to electric vehicles, it's the same thing. One of the biggest sales features for electric vehicles is that they accelerate quickly, that they have full torque to the wheels instantly, and that if you step on the gas, they will beat any similar combustion engine vehicle. And, and you can't fight physics. An electric vehicle that accelerates quickly all the time is gonna use up its battery power much faster than if it accelerates less quickly. But we all want to go zero to 60 fast and we want to cruise on the highway at 150 and the car companies want to sell us bigger more massive more horsepower more torque so we're doing everything backwards now remember when i told you to think about that equation f equals ma not as an f equals ma but just think of the three terms f m a and the relationship between them think about it if vehicles had less mass and they accelerated less quickly then car companies wouldn't need to to make a big F. They can make a smaller engine, a smaller F, because they would need a big F to quickly accelerate a large mass. If you decrease mass and acceleration, you can get by with a much smaller engine. So it's just common sense in physics, but it's the complete opposite of what we demand as consumers and what car companies advertise. It's the complete opposite. Car companies advertise powerful engine, Big vehicles that can accelerate quickly. And as consumers, that's what we demand. So really, understanding simple physics, and from a mathematical point of view, the solution is simple. So if I was that supreme being that could just snap my fingers and make a decision that everyone in the world would have to listen to, and I said automobiles must be 50% less massive, and automobiles must accelerate four times slower, and car companies, you could equip these vehicles with engines that are smaller that fit these requirements and all these vehicles must be equipped with a speed limiter to only allow them to go 50 miles an hour maximum on the highway so at high speeds they wouldn't use a ton of fuel fighting wind resistance if i could just make those decisions and the world would have to follow i could easily decrease the amount of fuel burned to move the world's fleet of vehicles by 75 percent like that of course we'd all be going a little bit slower and we'd be accelerating a little bit slower and we'd be driving smaller cars and we'd all be unhappy. That's so draconian. Ah, but now we get into the politics and the corporate discussions. And that's not what this video is about. But I just wanted to provoke some thought into your minds. Next time you're at a party or you're discussing things with people, send them to this video, okay? Uh, so maybe they can uh, listen to this and uh, if it sparked a little bit of a eureka moment for you, uh, then I'm happy. Just remember what motivates the two groups that talk about this the most, car companies and politicians. Politicians are simply interested in getting you to vote for them, and car companies are simply interested in making money. That's why GM and Ford are selling electric Hummers 
and electric F-150s because they want to make money selling them. And they know that there's a group of people that will rush out and get the new fancy toy, the new technology early, and sell the most expensive models first to those people that are going to rush out and buy them. You're not helping the world efficiency of vehicles by buying an electric Hummer. Elon Musk did not become the richest man in the world because he's trying to save the planet. He became the richest man in the world because governments dished out billions of dollars in subsidies so that rich people could buy very expensive electric toys from him. So I hope this video was a little thought provoking. Uh, thanks for watching guys. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. If Newton were alive today, he'd be shocked at the direction we've taken and how stupid we are that we can't follow simple little physics that he figured out 400 years ago when he saw that apple fall out of the tree. Catch you guys on the next one. Mass, right? Mass. Which term is the easiest to... Now let's look at that equation. What is the easiest thing to understand in that equation? Everyone knows what mass is, right? If you're a big fat guy, you have more mass. Everyone knows what mass is, right? Everyone knows what mass is, right? <laughs> Let's look at that equation. What's the easiest thing to understand in that? E Let's look at what is the easiest thing to understand in that equation? Mass, I guess. And what that relationship is telling us is that 